Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the F7 exam tips video for the December 2015 sitting. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk through the exam paper rather than give some specific tips because I think the way the exam is now being structured and the way they've introduced these MCQ questions into section A has made it very difficult to be able to predict exactly what's going to come up. What I'll do is I'll run through some core areas which I think you should be focusing on and I'll just go through what I think is going to be happening in maybe the 15 markers and the 30 markers. So at this point we all should be fully into our studies. I would just make my strongest recommendation to everyone in the sense of what's happened with these MCQ questions is that the examiner is now testing the entire syllabus. There's no hiding place. We shouldn't really be watching this video and thinking, okay, I haven't done enough studying, what should I focus on in order to pass? You need to be focusing on everything. Those 20 MCQs are coming from all different angles, all different areas from the accounting standards, from numerical questions to theoretical questions. So my first tip would be ensure that you study the breadth of the syllabus. Moving on to the section B, so once we've finished these 20 multiple choice questions, which makes up 40% of your exam, we've now got section B, which is going to make up 60% of your exam. This is split into three questions. We've got a 30 marker and two 15 markers. Now, since this syllabus change, we've had three different sittings of the exam, and section B has followed a very similar pattern for every single sitting. The three key areas that have been tested by the examiner have been consolidation, trial balance, and ratios and interpretation. Now, what about what you can't be doing is thinking, okay, that's now come up in three sittings, it won't happen again. I would be spending my time and focusing carefully on each of these three areas. Most of the students I've taught over here in the UAE, I would say, Everybody needs to pay particular attention to ratios. It tends to be an area that most students struggle with, particularly in the interpretation part. There's a nice article the examiner wrote a few years ago now that you can look at on the ACCA website that gives you just some ideas. It doesn't have to be the most in-depth analysis. Just trying to link these ratios together, why, they, why you could have this movement between one figure and another. In terms of the trial balance, I would suggest that that could potentially be coming up in the 30 marker only because in the last sitting we had the consolidation as the 30 marker so if we went for probability it would be more likely that we'd have the 30 marker as a trial balance question it could be a 25 mark trial balance with maybe a 5 added on it could be a bit of theory in there they could maybe add on an earnings per share calculation maybe they've had a rights issue within the trial balance and they're asking us to calculate the earnings per share so we'll need our theoretical x rights price so students should be aware of how to draw up the statements of comprehensive profit or loss statements of uh, financial position and also the statement of changes in equity you're going to get some tough adjustments in there there's no doubt in that but we've got to think there's going to be adjustments in there that are the core areas that we practice in terms of taxation deferred tax revaluation adjustments, property plants and equipment, some depreciation, maybe a bit of finance lease in there. Uh, other core areas we've also practiced would be the convertible instruments and also financial instruments. If we then did get the 30 mark questions of the trial balance, we could then expect a 15 marker from the consolidation. I think again, it's very difficult for me to say which side uh, this could fall on. Again, if I was a student, guys, at this moment in time, I wouldn't spend the last day thinking it's going to be an SOFP and that's all I'll practice. I'm hoping by this point, a lot of the F7 students should be liking the consolidation, so it shouldn't be a chore to practice the two. I would be ready on both sides. I'd be ready if there's a statement of financial position for 15 marks. I'd also be ready if there's a 15 mark statement of P&L. Or maybe the examiner could mix up a little bit and maybe give a part A where we've got to do a goodwill calculation and then roll it into a part B where you've got to do the consolidated statement of profit or loss. Another area which hasn't been examined in a 50 mark question which is in the syllabus is cash flows. Cash flows is not a bad area for F7, can't be ignored. I, don't, I wouldn't walk into the exam thinking the examiner is going to do the exact same thing every time. So again, I'd be very aware of cash flows, the headings, and how to calculate each of the figures. 
My suggestion would be, if any of these areas, be it ratios or cash flows, don't appear in the longer form question, then I'd expect at least one or two questions coming up in the multiple choice options. Hopefully, I've given us a bit of an encouragement, given us a lift in terms of where we should be focusing. For everybody I taught this sitting, thank you. It's been enjoyable. For everybody else, good luck for the exam. I wish you all the best. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.